You're listening to the Mind Your Business Podcast, episode number 45. Today, we're answering another listener question of the week, and we're going to talk about how to manage your energy. This is going to be a good one. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm James Wedmore, and I've built a seven-figure internet business that offers the financial freedom to do what I want, when I want. And I'm the first to say that hard work and hustle are not essential ingredients for your success. So how do you build a thriving business from the inside out? This is the Mind Your Business podcast featuring myself and co-host Phoebe Morocek. All right, listeners. Hello. Hello. James Wedmore here. I'm Phoebe Morocek. Welcome to the call. This is another listener question of the week. We want to thank you for submitting all your fantastic questions. This is one of our favorite things to do is just answer whatever you throw at us. So if you have a burning question in your mind or in your heart that you're just dying to know the answer to, or you just want to know our opinion about it or our take on it, don't be shy, ladies and gentlemen. Head on over to mindyourbusinesspodcast.com and submit your question there. There is no question too small, too big, too broad, or too specific. All right. You think they're going to do it? I hope so. I love reading (laughs) through them and seeing what people want to hear about. Yeah, we do too. We do too. We appreciate it. So we've got another great one here today. I'm excited to get into it. This is more, you know, we'll warn you, this is more for our woo-woo friends you know, I'm very woo woo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the awful word that just like it's like a stereotype. We don't like to be called woo woos. We don't like we don't like that word, but people tend to use it. So we're going to talk about energy today. We're going to talk a little bit about having the feeling of people draining your energy, how to increase your energy. You know, energy from like literally the physical sense of like, boy, I feel really tired, but also from a energetic, metaphysical woo woo side as well. So I'm excited. Phoebe, why don't you take it away? Sure. So this question is coming from the lovely Joe Gifford in England. And she asks, what advice would you guys have around managing your energy as business grows, both in physical and metaphysical senses? The more people you have following your business and buying from you, how do you ground yourself against negative energy and stay detached but motivated? Mm phenomenal question. It's phenomenal because I think everybody's asking it at one level or another, Mm -hmm. yet no one's really talking about it. Like no one's really out there saying like, yeah, so, you know, as you build a business, there's going to be these things called energy vampires, people that are just going to like knock you off your horse and, you know, throw your whole day off. Sometimes your whole week that happens. And it happens more and more so now that we have things like social media, right? It's great to be like, social media is awesome because I can engage and connect with people instantly. But sometimes people will just hunt you down and stalk you and find you every which way. You know, we have a full, like, here's a great example before we get into this, but we have a full, you know, support department. Every website you go to, you can find our support team. And these are dedicated people there with support issues. But you know, people don't always want to use support. (laughs) They want to find you wherever you are and everywhere you are. And so you'll have someone who's like going to private message you on Facebook, then they'll leave a message on your Facebook page. And then they're finding you on Instagram. They're going to comment there. Then they find some random blog post and they leave a comment on there. And then they comment on 10 YouTube videos. And this is all within 20 minutes. And they're like, hello, hello, where are you? And this is, you know, look, I get it, right? Like, When there's a problem, when you're not being served properly as a customer, you want to be served. In a world of instant gratification, we want to be served instantly. You know, so I get it, right? I'm not saying it's wrong or bad, but I have to let you know that this is part of the nature of the beast of what to expect. If these things are draining your energy, if these people are draining your energy, then your number one job is to do what Joe is asking. That's why this is such a great question. And that is to manage your energy. Right. First of all, before I want to share three things that we can do to effectively manage your energy as you build your business, especially as a personal brand. Like when you're in the spotlight, it's paramount. Mm -hmm. Right. Like just I mean, if you're just having a software company and you don't need to be the face of the company, it's a lot easier to I don't want to use the word hide, but be protected to hide behind the brand or the software. Right. But if you're the coach, if you're the author, if you're the speaker, you're the product. 
and people want you. They want direct access to you. So what does it really mean to manage your energy? What are we talking about here? Well, the beautiful thing I love about this podcast is that we can dip into the woo-woo pool. We can dip into the logical pool. We can talk marketing. We can talk business. And we can kind of twirl them all together because to me, they're all interchanged. It's all one connected, right? It's two sides of the same coin. So on one level, we can talk what Carl Jung first created as a distinction was the introversion and extroversion temperaments. Now, we've done an entire episode or dose on Myers-Briggs personality types originally developed by Carl Jung. But the introversion, extroversion temperament really had to do with a dichotomy in human beings as to how they got their energy. And Phoebe, as we know, is a... Extrovert. And James is a... Introvert. Yes. So we actually get our energy primarily, our primary fuel for life in different ways. Now, we do have, you know, her and I could get energy the same way, right? Like we can both probably be on a podcast and be geeked out and more excited by the end of it than we were at the beginning. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. We can both go to a live event and be inspired by a speaker and feel ready, full of energy to go do something with that. But primarily, you know, and this is what's going to dictate our day, our habits, our choices, and how much we can actually do in a day, there are going to be some factors that are different between Phoebe and I. So Phoebe is much more focused around what? Being around people, right? So, you know, you've talked on previous episodes about your goals of, you know, hosting your own events, of, you know, you do a lot of activities that are with a lot of people. Am I right? Yep. What are some things that come to mind just in 10 seconds or less that you do that you feel like really show that you're around people and you get charged that way? Well, just the things that I'm choosing to do on a daily basis, just my daily habits, which are, you know, the first things when I was going, I wanted to kind of make a home for myself in San Francisco. The first things I went to were joining a soccer team, you know, hosting girls, happy hours, having, I've just started a supper club, you know, all these things involve lots of people. So all of these things that I really wanted to create in my life to make me feel more at home in San Francisco. And so that would automatically for me indicate that being around people is really important to me. And I like to have my own alone time. And I know that we talked about on the episode, having the, you know, going right down the middle as far as introverted and extroverted for me. But now that I'm really kind of stepping into living here, I think I can definitely tell I'm much more extroverted than I am introverted. I mean, we tried to convince you to move to Laguna. And the immediate thing that turned you off to that is when we're like, well, it's a really sleepy, quiet town of just like older families and the whole town shuts down by 10. And you were like, yeah, no, that's (laughs) and I'm like, it's great because, you know, there's no one there to bug me and keep me up, you know, so I can go to bed at 10. So the thing is, is so what we're saying here is that the extrovert gets their energy from other people, from the external stimulus. So being around others of like mindedness, you know, they love concerts and events and seminars and all that stuff. You know, they want to be out in the hubbub of things. You know, my family is so interesting is they're all introverts except my dad. My poor dad's got to put up with a family of introverts every night growing up. All he wanted to do and he'd spend all of his extroverted energy trying to convince us just to go out. It was mm-hmm. dinner. It was a movie. It was something. Please, let's go out. All three of us are like, no, I don't want to. But I think, though, for me, when I'm around a lot of introverts, I become much more extroverted. And then if I'm around a lot of extroverts, I become much more introverted. So I kind of balance it out. So I can see your dad is so funny. (laughs) Yeah. The distinction here is that, you know, an introvert is always an introvert and an extrovert is always an extrovert. What you're talking about, so these are temperaments. And what you're talking about is just like personality, like who you kind of are. You know, you know, extrovert doesn't mean outgoing. That's the very careful that people just make those synonymous. An introvert doesn't mean shy. Mm -hmm. You know, it just means where we focus and that's it. But I understand what you're saying. Yes. Like when you're around others that are very introverted, you kind of feel compelled to be the leader of the group and the gregarious one and, you know, the cheerleader and ringmaster. Totally get that. But then you like it when there's someone who's more extroverted or more outgoing than you. And you're like, great, I'm just going to follow their lead. I'm just going to let them run the show and I'm just going to enjoy every second of it. Totally get it. So the thing is, is if you are an extrovert, you're going to be less sensitive to this. In fact, most extroverts just crave this. 
right? And so I can only assume, assuming can be dangerous, but that Joe would only be asking this question because she does feel more inclined that she's an introvert because extroverts don't really ask this question. They love being people. I mean, I have coaching clients, I have students that like their whole thing is about, they just want to be in front of as many people as possible. So they don't really talk about how do I manage my energy with all these people. It's the introverts who get their energy from an inward focus. Their best friends are their thoughts and ideas, okay? So extroverts have a lot of friends. Introverts have a lot of ideas. That's how I always like to look at it. But introverts, unfortunately, I don't ever, ever think, because I'm an introvert, that this is a shortcoming or a negative attribute at all. Um, But one of the consequences of being an introvert is that we are extremely sensitive, Now, I don't mean sensitive in the emotional standpoint, like you're going to hurt my feelings easily. Actually, the INTJ is actually very hard nosed and, you know, tough egg to crack here. But we are very, very sensitive to the energy of others, to our own energy. That's why we're, I've talked about this in a previous episode, that's why we're so efficient Mm -hmm. because we kind of, some of us feel like we're running on half a tank even when we start the day, you know, in the morning, right? That it's like, okay, so like an extrovert can get more energy as they go through the day because all these things in the world are giving, charging them. Mm-hmm. Well, the introvert's like, okay, this is all I've got. This better last, right? And so if you feel like you're an introvert, this is gonna be a much more relevant question to you because you're gonna be so sensitive and you wanna protect yourself. And so now we can kind of talk about this. So that's kind of like the Myers-Briggs personality type side of things. Now we kind of want to talk about it from a woo-woo energetic standpoint before we get into these three things that I think are going to help no matter where you're at or who you are. And so, you know, from an energetic standpoint, you know, and just so you guys know, like I have a background in energy healing. I became a Reiki master and learned all this stuff for several years practicing under a fifth generation healer, you know, just miracles. I really learned on one level that we can see how people can become energy vampires into your life. I call them energy vampires. You know, you've probably heard that term. Some of you guys have heard that term, but for me, they're more like leeches. People that will come into your life. And I think this is what Joe really wants to hear is as you put yourself out there in a way you know, you're being a certain way, you're making a certain type of promise. And there's people that have a energy of like a desperation and a clinginess to them and they will attach themselves to you and they will suck you dry. And they don't do it thinking that they're actually doing any of that. They're not sitting there saying, I am going to drain this person, Mm -hmm. right? They're doing that because they're most likely an extrovert And they're seeing how much energy they're getting from you. But as you know from like, I think it's Newtonian law that no energy is ever gained. It's just transmuted, Mm -hmm. right? So like there will be people that are like just fascinated by you, inspired by you. And if you're not careful, they're just going to take your energy. You know, thanks. Goodbye. Right. Mm -hmm. This is something I've had happen to myself. This is so freaking common. It's unbelievable. But I think I've gotten a lot better at this. And so before we share three really cool things, I want to just share like two really powerful energetic exercises that you can do. Okay. The first one is what is called a cord cutting exercise. And this is something that you want to do, especially if you do one-on-one client work or you've done anything, like maybe you've been on a coaching call with somebody, you know, group coaching call, or you've been like back and forth on a Facebook thread with someone. And, you know, you'll have this experience where you're working with someone. Tell me if you've had this at all, Phoebe, where you're like on the phone with someone or you're in person and you're really trying to help them. Like there really is that commitment there. And then you get off the phone and you're just exhausted. You're just like, bleh. Because half the time you're just battling through their BS. Like, yeah, but this and it doesn't work because of that. And here's my reasons and my stories and my excuses. And you're just trying to fight through that. And now you're gone. And they've actually probably sold you more on their reality than you've been able to sell them on yours. We're left with this like exhaustion. And so the cord cutting exercise works like this. After you're done and you're ready to have completion with this person, like so right after a call, you just close your eyes and you want to visualize that person as clear as possible in your mind's eye, standing right in front of you, looking at you. And you want to notice the cord that is connecting you to them because that's what you've done through your commitment is you've connected to them energetically. And you want to take your, I use my left hand, you can use both hands, but you want to take your hand and you want to, you know, straighten your hand out 
and stiffen your arm so that it's like a samurai sword and you literally physically want to move your arm and cut the cord. And if you really want to do this, you make a physical noise while you do it. Like a, and if you feel like it needs a few whacks, you just keep doing it. And the thing is, is I'll do this in public. I'll do this while I'm on stage and no one knows I'm doing it because it just looks like I'm kind of moving my arm really quick and <laughs> like almost like I am swatting a fly but or like almost scratching my face or like, you know, just moving my hand. But, you know, so you can do it really powerfully intentionally when you're alone and by yourself, but you could also do that, you know, anywhere, right? So that's very powerful. Now, the other thing that you can do that I think can help, which is another you know, woo-woo energetic visualization that was given to me a long time ago was in order to protect yourself, you can visualize yourself encapsulated in a gold colored egg or sphere. Mm. And the gold is very powerful color because it allows for you to emanate outward, but it reflects or deflects anything coming in. And so if you could try imagining like, part of your morning routine or visualization is taking a moment and just putting yourself in this protective gold colored shimmering cocoon or egg or sphere, setting the intention that it's there to allow you to send your energy outward to inspire, support and help others, but to first and foremost, protect you and to block off and reflect anything negative. I think you're going to find that very powerful. Okay, so those are two exercises. It's the golden egg and the cord cutting exercise. I mean, that cord cutting thing has stayed with me forever. And I mean, I do that daily. And I'll do it with Chelsea is so sensitive to other people's energies. Could you cut other, like, for example, you just said Chelsea is really sensitive. Can you cut cords for her? Or does it have to be? No, no, not unless they're in a healing and they have permission to be healed, right? And they've given that up to you. No, but I can sit there and say, Chelsea, cut the cord cut it and she knows what that means and she can do it and it's like two seconds Mm -hmm. it's done right and that's what you're doing you know you have to protect your energy so this is what we're talking about okay so whether you want to go into the energy spiritual metaphysical realm conversation with us or not there's still a fact that remains that there are people that are going to drain your energy if you're saying no then it's either one of two things one you're either this such a big extrovert (laughs) (laughs) You're so busy draining other people's energy that you don't notice, or you're just not noticing it. You're not knowing, you don't know why you're tired. You don't know why you're exhausted. And it just takes a little bit more like, you know, of a little observation and self analysis here. We want to share with you three things that I think can help as practices. So before we get into those three things, Phoebe, any questions or clarification before we jump in? No, I don't think so. I've seen you do the cord cutting and it's so, it's actually pretty amusing to watch. Because Wait, you're, how have you seen me do it? Do I say what I'm doing or what? You showed me. I was in Laguna and I remember oh. standing in your office and you're like, whoo, whoo. <laughs> I was like, what is going on there? Was I cutting <laughs> your cords? <laughs> <laughs> I was sucking your energy. Yeah. That's, what, that's what was happening. I think it makes a lot of sense. And as far as like the golden egg, my only question is, you know, is there any way to throughout the day, you know, so you do it in your morning practice, but if you are aware that maybe you do have a client or you're about to talk to somebody who normally or regularly kind of sucks your energy, can you go back into that golden egg and put yourself in? Absolutely. I mean, I've done that while I'm talking to, have you ever like been somewhere and someone just starts talking to you and you're like, oh, great. (laughs) Now as an introvert, That's usually where we go when people start talking to us. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, people I know or a client or a student. I'm talking about like the total stranger off the street who they just start talking to you. Mm -hmm. And for me, the thing is, with an introvert, they're already talking in their head so much that they don't really need the distraction of someone else talking to them. So, yeah, I'll do that. I'll just like imagine myself really protected in that golden egg or Mm-hmm. or some variation of a visualization like that to really protect myself. You know, usually anything that feels reflective, 
mm-hmm. and sets a boundary. Like you can play around with that whole concept. But I mean, you could just try. You could try like imagine you have an invisible shield in front of you and everything they do is just bouncing off. Give it a shot. Um, okay. So I want to talk about three things really quickly. And the first one is about creating a commitment with boundaries. Now, if you're a coach, if you're a personal brand and you know part of your offerings and what you sell is to serve others and help them to transform in one way or another, you know, it's really important that we do create a commitment to them. And it's also important to know what that means because I think people, it's a shame. I've been here and I see other people do it all the time is that they'll create the commitment with no boundaries, right? So if I'm committed, if you're my student, Phoebe, and I'm committed to your success, the mistake we make is that I will, I mean, I'll do whatever, I'll do your graphics for you and I'll write all your copy for you and I'll just do the webinar for you, Phoebe. You just sit back. And the thing is, is we think we're doing them a favor, right? And you know, there is, listen, there are cliche quotes in our industry or in our lives, excuse me, not our industry, in our lives, in our world, in our culture that we don't even hear anymore because they're so cliche. And one of them is the whole axiom of give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish, you feed him for life. You know, how many times have you heard that dumb quote since you were a little child, right? It has no meaning to you anymore. But this is exactly what we're talking about here. If you create a commitment for someone to get the results that they're after, you're not serving them in the best way possible if you do it for them. Because when you're gone and they move on on their own, they still don't know how to do it. They can't do it without you. That's not serving. Unless, of course, your offer is, this is what I signed up to do for you. And that's where the boundaries come in, is getting really clear on the expectation of where your role is and where it is not. So as a coach, if I were to take on a personal client as a coach, I do not write their copy. I do not do their graphics. I do not do their webinar for them. I literally just ask them great questions and let them come up with the right answers, but I will not do a single thing for them. And they're very clear on that, but there are boundaries in place. And it is very important that we're not overstepping those boundaries because like, oh, but I want them to succeed and I want to help them and I want them to get results. And listen, you are robbing them of the experience of them getting to discover what it really takes to do it themselves. And the thing is, is that all we can really do, we can never do anything for anybody. Even if you're like, no, I do Facebook ads for a client. Great. But you can't write their copy. You can't sell their product for them. You can't create the product. You didn't create the offer. You didn't create anything else. All you can do is Facebook ads. Well, I write copy for people, James. Okay, great. But you can't be the brand. You can't be the product for them. You can't run the Facebook ad. You see what I'm saying? It's like you can't be it all for somebody and just do it for them. And so at the end of the day, we can't really help anyone. It really is all of them. We look back. We had a great coaching call with our inner circle members. And, you know, they're sharing on the call, like the results they've gotten and they want to attribute it to the group and us. And, you know, I have to remind them, I was like, this is all you, you did this, all we did. And all you can really do as a course creator, as a coach, as an influencer, all you can really do is be in the energy, be the state of who they want to be and kind of have an invitation Like put your hand out and say, if you'd like to join me up here, I'll be waiting. And that's all we can do. And if we're trying to do anything else, you're wasting your damn time because you cannot build someone's business for them. You cannot lose the weight for them, right? I mean, you can't do someone's workout for them. The workout and the weight loss is the greatest example. I can't outsource my pushups. I still have to do that work. And so all a personal trainer can be for his client or her client is the energy of inspiration and motivation and possibility and energy, you know, like vitality and health. So that when I'm around that person, I'm compelled to do the work. I feel more motivated, more pushed, more cared for than ever before. More like, wow, this person really wants me to succeed. I don't want to let them down. I'm going to push past this once and for all. But that's still all me as the client. I'm still doing all of that. Mm -hmm. And so phase one is really identifying that, yes, you have a commitment. 
like that you can create a commitment for a client, whether they sign up for a $50 program of yours or a $20,000 coaching. And it's the same commitment. It's that you're standing in a place where you believe in them achieving the result that you've promised, but it's still 100% up to them. You never want to rob someone of that opportunity for them to create on their own. That's their life and their journey to live. Does this make sense? Definitely. And as you're going through this, I'm thinking back to last year for me when I was working with one-on-one clients and I remember feeling so zapped because I was that person that was writing the copy, doing the Facebook ads, creating other lead pages, creating their graphics and all of this stuff that because I so badly wanted them to succeed. And it's funny that now thinking about, you know, my energy in the current moment with our mastermind group, you know, our inner circle, it's like, it just feels so much lighter and watching everyone else kind of do the work and we just kind of reflect back to them what they want or, you know, that commitment that they created at the beginning of the year and what they were really committed to achieving or having in their life. And it feels so much better. I remember the end of or middle of last year, I was so drained. And so all of this makes complete sense. And I think that when you're working with people one on one, especially like that commitment is so important. And so for you to like keep going back to their commitment and allow yourself to kind of play in that space, I think is something that I've learned, I mean, fairly recently. So yeah, it's totally making sense to me. Good. And the final piece I'll say about this is if this is what you want to do and this is what you're up to doing, the way you truly do this is, especially on like a one-on-one level, because I think that's really important because that's, you know, it's easier to create a boundary with a course versus someone who's paid a lot of money to you to work with you on a one-on-one level or a very intimate level. And so the moment that this person pays, the moment they invest their money in you, here's one of the first things you can do. You want to look at them, whether it's imagine them in your you know, mind's eye or whatever, and you want to look at them with, and especially through every interaction with them, With the full knowing that they have within them everything it needs, everything they need to get what they want, to get what they're after. And that there's just some stuff in the way. And it's your job to help them get that stuff out of the way. So I kind of use this analogy of like, if Phoebe's standing here and she's my client, I'm going to imagine that Phoebe is this perfect genius capable of anything. That's how I would look at her. You're right. I know. (laughs) Thank you. Okay. So Phoebe says, James, I want to hire you. I'm ready to hit seven figures and I'm willing to do whatever it takes. So the moment she pays me is the moment I create this commitment to her result, which means I look at her through this genius of she has everything she needs right now to hit that seven figure level because she wants it. She can do it. But it's like looking at someone who's like pure genius, pure potential, and they're covered in mud. Like they just lost like the most epic game of mud fight ever. So she's got this like energy of genius and it's just covered in mud. It's my job to help her just pull the mud away, just piece by piece. Like, all right, let's, you know, we've got to get this out of the way. We've got to stop thinking this. We've got to let go of that. Let's move this over here. What do you think about that? Is that serving you? Is this helping? Well, why are you saying that? You know, until finally she looks in the mirror one day and says like, oh my gosh, there's no mud. And what was underneath it was this perfect, pure potential seven figure person. And then they just, that's just who they are. And that's how they act. They're just a function of that. And I can do that without me going, oh, let me, let me do it. Let me just write this for you. And let me create this for you. I'll just do it because I want you to succeed. There's a big difference there. And that's the energy we're creating there if we want to manage our energy. So that's step one. We went really long on that one. Creating the commitment with boundaries. Now, step number two is really easy, so we can go over this really quickly, is that especially if you're an introvert and you're sensitive to energy, is you want to find those who do light you up. You know, I have a few coaching clients and students who every time I talk to them, they are like so eager to want to implement any advice and then come back to me with results and gratitude. And so you're looking for people that are coachable, they're big action takers, and they're full of gratitude and acknowledgement. That is going to light you up. I mean, I remember going, and this is a great example of this. I remember going to the gym and I'm walking into the gym one day about ready to do a workout. 
And I get a text from someone just sharing the results of something that I, like a 20 minute call with them. And they're like, you just changed my life. And it was like the most motivating workout I had ever had. And that's when I started realizing like, wow, the more I'm around people and support those that are giving me that feedback loop of like, you know, and it's not, and this is very important because I'm not saying you need to go around and take credit for everybody else. That's not what we're saying here. But I noticed that having that experience gave me more energy. So what is it? It's that understanding that you matter and you have an impact on other people's lives. So that's where the balance comes in between advice number one and advice number two is that when you create the commitment, you stand for their potential, but they got to do the work. And when they do the work, you realize that you had an impact in someone else's life, that you made a difference for the quality of someone else's life, that's truly helping someone. And that is going to give anybody, introvert or extrovert, energy. You know, when you know you've had these experiences where someone's going through a breakup or having a bad day, and you just happen to say the right thing to them, and they come back to you and they're like, man, Phoebe, you just made my day. That changed everything for me. You're like, wow. That's awesome. Really? I had no idea. That's pretty yeah. cool. And that's what number two is, is look for more of the people, past clients, customers, students, whatever that do light you up and spend more time with them. Go reach out to them and just check in on them. How's it going? How about, I mean, I have so many people that like have never told me the results of my coaching and then you just kind of finally check in with them and they're like, oh my gosh, I can't, where do I start? Like all these amazing things happen. I was like, why aren't you telling me these things? I need this. Like that helps fuel me, you know, especially when you're having a bad day. So you got to do that. So when we're, yeah, I get the like one-on-one closing the feedback loop, but also if you have a course with, you know, hundreds of people in it and maybe they're not giving you the feedback that, you know, you're changing their life or their course is really making an impact How do you then find those people to allow, I guess, that feedback to kind of like soak in? And so you can really accept that without coming across like, oh, hey, is this helping? Is this not? Or do you just ask that? No, you do ask that. And the thing is, Phoebe, is if you don't have a feedback mechanism in place, you're missing a huge essential element of any offer, you know, group scaled offer, which is like community. Yeah. You know, the whole point of community is so that you're really, this is really what it is, is so that the other members of the group become the, hmm, let's see, what's the best way I can say this? They become what you initially were. So here you are, you go create a course or a coaching program and you're like holding this space for like, here's what's possible, but you're doing it alone. You're like, I did this. You can do this too. This is what's possible. And you're like really trying to hold this. It's like trying to hold up, you know, like a building's falling down and you're trying to hold it up, but you know, like Superman or Superwoman, like holding up by yourself. And then like three students decide to truly believe in you and they do it. Now they also become what's possible. Yep. And they become more of a source of inspiration than you do. And now they're holding up the building with you. And that's what community really is because we're in a promotion right now. And so we have a private Facebook group and I have people you can tell that are like, okay, James, easy for you to say, you've been doing this for eight years. You obviously have a team. You have all these people. You've done this for such a long time. What about me? And I have one of my students, Mariah McCullough, who has had extraordinary results in just a few short months. She was part of our beta program, but Mariah also has a full-time job. She is a mom and she's doing this business on the side without any help. And so, you know, it's one thing for me to go, you guys can do this. It's a hundred times more powerful when Mariah just says, I just did this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so if that feedback loop isn't there, if there isn't a platform where people can share the results and give continued encouragement and help hold up the building with you. So you're not doing it all alone. You need to get that in place. Okay. Now I want to move on really quickly to number three. And this is where, especially if you're an introvert, you need to do something to recharge your energy. Cause the original question Joe is asking is how do we manage our energy? How do we protect ourselves? And it means that as a creator, 
it is our natural inclination that we are putting a lot of energy out there. We are creating stuff that's never been created before. Our content, our systems, our strategies, this podcast, like, this is stuff that we are creating and that takes up energy. And so what are you doing to get your energy back? So whenever we finish up a big launch, which takes up a massive amount of energy, the first thing we do is we celebrate the launch and we celebrate it. Chelsea and I do what's called a staycation. We go to one of our favorite luxury hotels in our hometown of Laguna Beach. And then we take a few days off. Okay. I try to keep to 36 hour work weeks during the week. That's less than 40 hours. That's less than eight hours a day, five days a week. Okay. It's not about working longer. This is why this whole hustle thing is total BS. In fact, I found a video on latest stats that reveal that the most productive amount of time you spend in a week working is 24 hours. After 24 hours of a work week, not in one day, but across five days, your productivity, your energies begin to fall. Your job needs to be more on how do I recharge? How do I stay in a place of rest, creativity, and energy increase and intake, not energy outtake? Okay, because if you're going to continue to run on an empty tank, you might as well not even run. Just pull over and fill up, okay? Morning routines become essential. If you don't have time for a morning routine, there's something wrong there that you need a morning routine. Like, no one really sees the irony in situations like that. Like, well, I don't have time for stuff like that. Well, that's why you need it. It's because you don't have time. When you realize that you create your own reality and you've created a reality where there's no time left in the day, and you don't like that. Some people like that. So, you know, like you look at the Gary Vaynerchuk of the world, that he loves working 15 hour days and being really busy. It's not that he doesn't have time for a morning routine. I don't know if he has one or not. But if he says, I don't have time, what he really means is, I don't want one. Yep. And you have to ask, like, well, do you want one? And if you're drained and exhausted, then you need one. Napping, reading books, podcast, hello, any type of audio book, that's going to really help. But ultimately, it's about doing things that inspire you. That's why I go to the beach every day, right? So the salt water is very healing energetically. It's like an eraser. It's like a whiteout pen to electromagnetic frequencies and stuff. So if you're on your computer for a long time and you kind of feel like fuzzy and blah, or you're on your phone for a long time and you kind of have like your head kind of feels all groggy, jumping in the ocean is like a total energetic bath. It's amazing. I always come out, doesn't matter how tired, how long I've been working, every time I come out of the ocean, I feel so refreshed and alive. It's amazing. But you got to be able to do the things that inspire you, that heal you, that recharge you. And, you know, part of life is discovering what those things are. Yep. It's a buffet. You know, oh, I didn't really like the meatloaf, so don't get the meatloaf again. You know, you know I, ooh, I do like this. And I find things like, wow, I really like surfing. I really like going for walks at night and I love getting up early. Great. So start investigating what you like, what your body likes and start doing those things. So mm -hmm. there you go. Anything else? Just to recap really quickly, you want to manage your energy, create a commitment that has boundaries. Number two, hang out with those and spend more time with those that are coachable, big action takers, and they're grateful. Those who light you up. And number three, make sure you're doing the things, put these at a priority that really recharge you. So this is like massive alone time. Now, extroverts don't want massive alone time. That's fine. But if you're a creator and you're putting stuff out, you should be doing something that really like centers and grounds you. Okay. And that could be anything. Going for a walk, going to the gym, moving your body, moving your mind, something. All right. So anything else before we wrap it up, Phoebes? I don't think so. I think when you're talking about the alone time, I just, I like to be outside. And that's something that hasn't... Yeah always been a major theme in my life. So that's something. And I love the investigation process. Like you said, I think that's really important as well. Definitely. Definitely. You know, don't look for what we do. Don't look, oh, this is the answer. Everyone's got to go move to the beach now and jump in the ocean every day. No, I have people that love just hiking or they love the woods or they love, you know, the mountains and everyone's got their own thing. And that's what this is really about. Finding what works for you. So Joe, I hope this helped. This was a phenomenal question. Hopefully we gave a half of a phenomenal answer here, a semi phenomenal answer. I hope this helped our other listeners as well. So thank you everyone for tuning in. Truly appreciate you. We've got more episodes coming your way. So if you haven't subscribed over on iTunes, make sure to go do that now. You can visit www.jameswedmore.com forward slash iTunes and you can subscribe to catch all of our future 
episodes. We're doing two episodes a week now. So we do our full episode on our Mondays where we talk about our big topics, all kinds of stuff, how to manifest your goals, the mindset of entrepreneurship, how to recover from failure, doubt, overwhelm, all kinds of stuff. And then of course we do our listener calls of the week every Thursday. So go ahead and do that and we'll see you on the next episode. Take care.